it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo of the 2021 Tesla Model Y and its 14 speaker, 560 watt premium audio system. This is going to be an in depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio controls, audio adjustments, speaker locations, audio inputs, and then get out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling. And I'll give you my thoughts at the end. If you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning, you just want to get to the audio demos, check the chapters in the videos, you can skip right on ahead to the music. Before we get started, let's hop out, take a quick look at it. Make sure our climate is on even when we get out because it is toasty today with that big glass roof. The sun just beams in and heats this thing up like a greenhouse. But for those of you who don't know, this is actually our long-term Tesla Model Y standard range. We picked it up back in January and have almost 13,000 miles on it now. So we spent plenty of time behind the wheel and all the different seats doing all sorts of fun stuff. We've got so many videos on this car, I'll put the whole playlist in the description, but if you want to see more, let us know in the comments and we can probably do that for you. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed WAV audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system, and high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the tests with sound settings set to their factory defaults, so let's take a look at those now. The big old Tesla screen, very notorious, but also very easy to use once you get used to it. So if we were in just the main screen, kind of on the map right here, the media was completely gone. You can just scroll this up and you can see settings, click on that. Up here in tone, you've got kind of a five band equalizer, if you will, for bass, mid, treble, and then kind of two in between. We'll go through those in a moment. You've also got a front, rear, left, right fader and balance here that you kind of just move around wherever you want the sound to be. That's fun, and you can place it right in the center. Options, you have immersive sound, off, standard, and high. Let's go through those. Off is going to give you the most true to your music recording sound. Sometimes I'll use standard, but high sounds way too fake. I often leave that off. You also have a few options like uh, DJ commentary while you're streaming music. We'll go to a little bit of that later. And then in sources, you can sort of toggle on or off which sources show up here. Because, for example, we don't have the premium connectivity option. We're not paying monthly for it in this car. So when we're driving, if we don't have our hotspot going, we can't actually use streaming, Spotify, TuneIn, or karaoke. So typically I have those off. Let's go through the bass and mid-range and treble now. not quite as much adjustment as a nine band equalizer like you might get in a Volvo or a BMW, but I still like having a few extra options here. And look at how responsive the screen is. Refresh rate's very good. Everything works very quickly and tracks my finger very nice. For audio controls in the Model Y, you have a volume slider right here. You can either tap on the screen or slide all the way down or can't really slide up, but I suppose you could tap this and then slide it right there. That's often used by the passenger for the driver. It's very easy to use this steering wheel control. It scrolls. I like scrollers for volume. That works nicely. For track selection, there's no uh, persistent track control on the screen. So if this were gone and you say we're in your energy screen, for example, there'd be no way to adjust the, screen, uh, the track from here, but you could use a steering wheel back and forth or simply hit the music screen and then you've got right there. Typically when you're driving around you have your map going here and then this kind of small music screen there. You can just tap those buttons. For audio inputs in the Model Y, you've got FM radio, Bluetooth streaming, a few internet streaming options, USB-A and USB-C, and that is it. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, no AM radio, no native Sirius XM satellite radio, no Android Auto, no Apple CarPlay, no disc player, and no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. 
Now, some of those are a big deal to people, especially the no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and it does make it a bit tougher to get high fidelity audio streaming as well. If you want to listen to something like Tidal, Tesla says they are coming out with a native Tidal application at some point for hi-fi audio, but at this point here in July of 2021, no hi-fi Tidal streaming yet. So what do you have? Well, you do have this Tesla streaming option. So if you have the premium connectivity or a hotspot going, you can listen to sort of some of their curated music. You do have a native Spotify app. So you can see we're logged into Spotify. We can click right on some of our playlists. Tune in radio, so that allows you to get a lot of different radio stations from around the country. Karaoke. I can't actually play any of these songs because they're copyrighted, but I can show you how if I were to click on, let's say, um, Seven Rings, Ariana Grande, it would come up, turn it all the way down, come up with a karaoke screen, and in just a second it would start giving me the words and I could sing along to it. It's not the actual recording of the song, it's a like a generic karaoke version, but that's kind of fun for kids, I suppose, if you're driving around, the, the, the lyrics come up. But again, you have to be paying for the premium connectivity or have some sort of mobile hotspot going for that. Having owned the car, I simply rely on Bluetooth audio streaming through my phone for most music. However, I do have a Tidal subscription and it would be nice for Tesla to get around to adding native Tidal into their cars. And I do know a lot of people who would be frustrated with not having Sirius XM, even though you could just play it through your phone. Speaker locations. As I said, this is a 14 speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Out here, 10, 11, 12, 13 in the rear deck uh, lift gate, and then 14 is a subwoofer back there. All right, since there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to demo, Let's get out on the road.
like the the range and the crispness and the power of the sounds that you get out of the Tesla audio system. There's so much crispness coming from the computer. They did a great job with these speakers, these speakers, and the three up front, creating a front-facing sound stage that sounds really good in those upper ends. I will say everything is a bit exaggerated. There's a little, there's a little too much bass coming through for my taste at the standard settings, but obviously you can turn down the uh, adjustment for that, and I have. Typically when I'm listening to this, I have the bass adjustment down one, the mid bass down half, and then everything even down. Sometimes I even drop the treble down a half, but the crispness and the power that this has, really darn good. One complaint I do have is there's no element of compression. This is a very true to audio recording system. So uh, because the cabin's kind of loud in here, especially cruising at highway speeds, what you get is certain songs, especially if you're listening at quieter volumes, where you might have a quiet section of the song or say talk radio that comes through not very loud. It, it, it's very subtle and quiet, you gotta kind of turn it up. And then all of a sudden a loud section comes through or maybe somebody laughs on a podcast and it blasts your eardrum, it's very loud. So I know compression wouldn't necessarily be the best for audio quality, but it'd be nice to have a compression option that would uh, bring up the quiet sounds and bring down the loud sounds and try to create a more even sound listening experience. So this next one, we're gonna uh, sample the bass. So we're gonna start with just normal bass settings and then I'll turn the mid and the low bass all the way up. We'll hear how it sounds. It's not particularly loud in this cabin, but it's also not particularly quiet. The glass roof makes for kind of an echo chamber. You might be able to hear my voice echoing a little bit, and we, that does affect the music a little as well. And then versus the Model 3, since the Model Y is open in the back and you have that hatchback design, you do get often a kind of a subsonic echo effect. You can adjust the openers and, and, and closers of the hatch to sort of quiet that down, but still louder in here than a Model 3.
Model Model Y's 15 speaker or 14 speaker audio system. It's pretty darn good. This thing offers a lot of satisfying sound for a lot of different music tastes. I do appreciate having those adjustments in there. That five band equalizer certainly helps. I don't really care for the immersive sound. I could see some people liking that. I think it's a bit gimmicky. At the end of the day, some people are gonna be really turned off by missing some of their favorite audio inputs. And I think that is a bit of a slip up on Tesla's part, but as an owner, I don't mind all too much. Objectively speaking, for sound quality, the Model Y is just sneaking in with an A rating, A tier for this system. Not the very, very best to be top S tier. That's saved for the top Bowers and Wilkins and Burmester and uh, those, uh, Mark Levinson type systems. But this is still very good. I know in the Model 3, it's very good as well. Subjectively speaking, for this price, for the style of vehicle, uh, still just barely sneaking in at an A. Like I said, not having some of those key inputs uh, it's pretty damning, but I do appreciate how well the system works for the inputs you do have. I really like the scroller audio controls. Overall, great system from Tesla. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more on our long-term Model Y, check the link in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.